analysis of accounts over several years. In this lesson, we begin to use year-end documents to study how a firm is doing over several years, with the aim of understanding how healthy it is, what are its prospects and future. We shall look at two years. So let's think of a timeline. The firm began in the past, and there will be two years in our analysis, with a beginning balance sheet, an income statement of the first year, a balance sheet at the end of the first year, an income statement of the second year, and a balance sheet at the end of the second year. So here is the beginning balance sheet, which I call balance sheet zero. So we have the assets and liabilities. All the assets are tools somehow to create value. And the liabilities show the way all these tools were financed. So this is a description of the financing of the assets. Uh, let's look at the tools first. So we have two big parts we are familiar with, the fixed assets and the current assets. In the fixed assets, we know already some of the items, machinery, transportation equipment, buildings, there is no mystery. The firm also owns some land. Land is never amortized. Intangibles are past patents the firm acquired, as well as the initial expenditures to found the firm, which usually are capitalized. And in the current assets, we have the usual stocks, client, short-term financial assets, that is cash, that is, was parked to produce value, and we have cash and bank, which I learned together. And on the liability side, we have three sources of financing. First of all, value coming from the owners. This is called the net worth. Then money borrowed, which cost interest charges every year. That can be called costly debt. And we have, of course, free debt. That is credit from suppliers and other creditors. Let's look now at the income statement over the first year. We have sales of 800, uh, think of millions of euros. This uh, leads us to the COGS, cost of goods sold, which are the opening stocks plus the purchases minus the closing stocks. So that's COGS of 470, therefore a gross margin of 330, and the various charges. These are called operating charges. The first three are cash operating charges, whereas amortization is a non-cash charge. We reach an operating result. And we have other charges, which are not related to operations, but to the structure of liability. That's particularly the case of interest charges. And then we reach the balance sheet at the end of the first year of our analysis. Now I present the balance sheet this way because I need to look at several of them. So we have the initial balance sheet we just saw, the first income statement we just saw, and the balance sheet at the end of the first year. So let's begin to look at the evolution of the various items. Intangibles didn't change, land didn't change, Buildings went from 75 to uh, 100. So there was an investment in buildings. And we shall assume in this example that the firm does not sell any assets. So the net increase in these uh, gross fixed assets is indeed investments. Machinery also increased from 75 to 100. Transportation equipment didn't change. Financial assets didn't change and the cumulated depreciation went from 150 to 200. And this can be checked with the intermediate income statement. We had cumulated amortization of 150. We have yearly amortization, also called the depreciation of 50. Therefore, we have a, an ending cumulated depreciation or amortization of 200. The stocks went up 
100 to 120. The clients went up from 160 to 200. The short-term financial assets went from 20 to 70, and the cash, uh, cash and bank stayed at 50. On the liability side, the uh, capital didn't change. The sum of retained earnings went from 50 to 70, and that corresponds to the 20 of retained earnings of the year. The bonds, which were zero, now are 50. These are loans directly from the financial markets. The long-term bank loan didn't change and the creditors change a bit. Let's comment a little more on the stocks evolution and the clients evolution. An increase in stock may be a good, a good news or maybe a bad news, it depends. Uh, there are some industries where a lot of stock is good, like in jewelry, but usually you try to have stocks which are low compared to your co cost of goods sold, which are here. And this is analyzed through the ratios. We shall study that in another lesson. As far as clients is concerned, there again, uh, it may be a good news that we have more clients, but here we have more clients that do not pay. So we have to check whether we sell to clients which are good clients or to clients which are bad clients. Secondly, uh, in this uh, balance sheet at the end of the first year, we have to realize that these are synthetic documents. To understand finally the evolution, we must go back to the ledger and the accounts. And finally, let's look at the second year of our analysis. Here it is, so we have the first year and the second year. So we have again an income statement and an ending balance sheet. And there again, let's make some comments. The sales went from 800 to 1000. That's good. The COGS you can check, uh, and the charges we can, we can check again. The salaries went from 120 to 150. The rent stayed the same. The other charges stayed the same. The yearly depreciation went from 50 to 80. So necessarily, the cumulated depreciation, which were 200 here, now are 280. That corresponds to this number. As far as the stocks are concerned, the stocks, they were at 100 at the very beginning. They went up to 130 and now they are going down. That may be a good news or maybe a bad news. Uh, we may be selling our stock because we have difficulties really producing goods and, and selling them. So we just sell the stock. The clients uh, are increasing um, alarmingly from 160 to 200 to 270. So there again, we have to check what's going on and that can be done only through an analysis that is not shown here. We have to go back to the ledger and we have to go back also to uh, the sales team and ask them what they, what they do. The short-term financial assets were 20, then 70 and now 120. So as far as, as cash is concerned, we are doing well, cash or, or almost cash. But that is not necessarily a good news. Uh, it has, once again, to be analyzed in details. And finally, on the liability side, capital didn't change. The sum of retained earnings, which was, let's look at that. which was 50, then 70, is now 100, because we retain, first of all, 20, and now we retain 30. This makes sense. So I'm running out of time. Let's finish up. The bonds were zero, then 50, and now still are 50. The long-term loan didn't change, and we can check what happened to the creditors. So this is the beginning of an analysis of the firm. Of course, in order to understand the firm entirely, 
we have to go also to a study of its uh, environment, that is the market, the market shares, the competitors, the competitors pair arena of activities of the firm, battlefields, uh, they are called segments. So this is the, only the very beginning of understanding the firm.